A warm welcome to the third film in our Construction Detail series. In it, we look at some of the key principles that apply to the preparation of 1 to 5 scale drawings. As for 1 to 20 scale drawings, your first step here should be to consider how big the finished 1 to 5 scale drawing will be and how it will fit onto your sheet of paper. You should calculate the likely size of the detail on a smaller scale and consider this in relation to the paper size. To do this, you should mentally divide your sheet of A3 paper into two A4 sheets because ideally, as has already been said, detailed construction drawings should not exceed A4 size. The point at which you take your section through the building is also important. Although it may be easier to cut through a wall without a window, doing so will reduce the amount of information contained in your drawing. In a 1 to 5 scale drawing, you should always take your section at the point where it will answer the most construction questions, like these vertical and horizontal sections through a window. A detailed drawing does not show the position of the detail in relation to the building as a whole. This is the job of 1 to 50 scale drawings, which show the entire building. They should always include references to any 1 to 5 scale detail drawings to make clear what is to be built where. German Standard DIN 1356 1 Building and Civil Engineering Drawings, Part 1, Types, Content and General Rules of Representation, specifies the line types and weights to be used. The principles that apply here are the same as for 1 to 20 scale drawings. Continuous lines, dashed lines, dashed dotted lines, and dotted lines are all used, and the appropriate line weights are those set out in Line Group 3. Since all the components illustrated in 1 to 5 scale drawings will need to feature material hatching, the relevant sections of DIN 1356-1 are once again particularly important. As you may already have noticed, insulation is not always indicated as shown here. This is because of the specific properties of the insulation used, as we will see a little later on. We have already mentioned the fact that damp-proof membranes are often shown as being thicker in drawings than they are in reality, whereas metal sheeting is frequently represented in abstract form by a line. This detail of the base of a building provides a further example of this difference. Fixings such as screws, dowels and ties are shown by means of a dashed line running along the fixing axis even if they have a diameter of 5mm or more. This method makes a distinction between the point at which they pass through a flat damp-proofing element, for example, and the element itself. Cutting planes must always be indicated to show the relationship between different detail drawings of the same construction detail. These lines show the point at which the section is taken through the building. Here you can see three drawings that illustrate the complex construction at the point where a windowsill meets the reveal. The drawing on the right-hand side would be almost unintelligible if the middle drawing did not show how the section runs through the building. 1 to 5 scale detail drawings tend not to include many measurements as the various component and layer dimensions have generally already been given in the layout plans. They do, however, have to name the various components. This is best done by using text boxes located close to the relevant component, a method that is both quick and easy to understand. Using a key may improve the aesthetic appearance of a drawing, but it also makes it harder to understand. Summary. Start by considering how big your finished drawing will be and how it will fit onto your sheet of paper, which should be A4 size. Take a section through the element you are drawing so that it answers as many design questions as possible a section through a window, for example. The line types and weights and hatching patterns you should use are set out in German Standard DIN 1356 1 Building and Civil Engineering Drawings, Part 1, Types, Content, and General Rules of Representation. Please take a look at the fourth film in our Construction Details series, in which we consider the information that should be included in component assembly drawings.